In Exodus 33, it seems that Moses asked God for something and didn't entirely know what he was asking. He said, God, I want to see your glory, which sounds like a really good request. But God basically said, Moses, I don't know that you realize what you're, <laughs> exactly what you're asking. He said, because nobody can see my glory and live. If you've ever stood in front of a, a roaring, raging fire and tried to stand close, you know you can only get so close to it because our skin just is not strong enough to withstand the heat. So you have to stand back. Well, picture the most, well, the biggest, biggest fire you've ever tried to stand in front of and multiply it by infinity and, and you get the glory of God. And our souls are just not strong enough to stand in front of that. And I think I maybe surprised Moses just based on his question and that it surprised him that he was that weak. And we get surprised in the same way sometimes, unfortunately. We get to the end of a conversation. We get to the end of a day. We get to the end of week six or seven or eight <laughs> in a pandemic and in a quarantine. And we surprise ourselves by how weak we were. Why did I fly off the handle that way? Why in the world did I lose my patience? Why was I so unloving? Why was I so afraid of that particular thing? Why did, it, why did I give in to that same temptation when I knew better? Why? We sometimes surprise ourselves by our weakness. But God wasn't surprised by Moses' weakness. Remember, he's the one who identified it to Moses. He's the one who pointed out, Moses, you're not weak enough. Or, I'm sorry, you're not, you're not strong enough. You are, too, you are too weak in order to stand in front of me. But then God did something. He didn't just say, well, no, this can't happen, Moses. He said, Moses, I'll let you see my glory, but just a glimpse of it. He said, I'm going to take you, Moses, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to place you inside the cleft of a rock. And then I'm going to take my hand and I'm going to cover you so that you'll be safe when I pass by. You'll be safe from my glory. But then after I pass by, I'm going to lift up my hand just for a little bit, just for a moment, so that you can look and you can look at my back. And just seeing my back will be glorious enough. And that's all you can take and live, just a, just a glimpse. So God was well aware of Moses' weakness. And God was the one who protected him from it. And the only thing that Moses needed to be in order to be safe was weak. Is weak. We don't like our weakness. We don't like when it shows up. But you don't need to be afraid of it. Picture the hand of Jesus stretched out on a cross and a nail is pounded through it. And then picture the other hand stretched out the other way and a nail is pounded through it. And he doesn't move. He doesn't pull his hand away because he really was that determined to keep us safe, to get you one day to a place where you won't just catch a glimpse of God's glory. You'll get to live in it. You'll get to live in it, in all of it, and never be afraid. And all you need to be in order to be safe He's weak. He's weak. God knows we are. God sees it. And we do too. But we don't need to be afraid of it. Not tonight. Not any night. As you close your eyes tonight, picture the hands of your Father in heaven holding you and not letting go. Picture his loving, steady hand right above you, protecting you, even from your own weakness, even from the weakness of everyone else around you. He sees our weakness, and he knows how to keep us safe from it. Rest well tonight, my friends. You're in the hands of God.